So welcome to lecture two, part B. And we're going to look at the cost of poor quality and the classification of quality costs. Again, we're in the define phase. And if we look again at the laser pointer here, we've talked a little bit about our goals and now we're going to determine our quality costs. Because as we said, we have to understand what the financial saving is to the business, what the value is to the customer. This is getting in away from again opinion and getting to the facts. So let's look at the uh, quality costs and see what they are. And we can see, I suppose, this term was introduced, you know, back by some of the quality gurus, uh, Duran and Crosby, and they talked about the cost of quality and quality is free. But I suppose the problem really is that the name is stuck and people do see quality as a cost. They think high quality is high cost. But uh, that's not actually the case. I mean, you can have very high quality at, at low cost because if you have excellent processes, then you will have excellent quality and you don't have to spend a lot of money. If you have poor processes, you're going to spend a lot of money and even then probably your results will be average at best. So the quality cost is really anything that um, the organization has to pay to ensure that the quality of the product or service that the customer gets, you know, meets their requirements. Um, so they're really those costs that are incurred in excess of those that would have been incurred if the product were built or the service performed exactly right the first time. And the quality costs were broken down into four types. So we have uh, prevention costs, appraisal or inspection costs, external failure costs and internal failure costs. And the idea is that you classify your quality costs into these four areas. Now there's also a fifth area here, intangible costs, where maybe you can't put a real value on it, but it's where it affects your brand, uh, your image, your goodwill of the company. So I was listening to uh, an interview about the brand and you know they were talking about the value of the brand and really you could take, you know, two car models with exactly the same specification. One is a BMW and one is an unknown or uh, relatively new brand. And the difference in the cost of the car between the no name brand and the branded product is really the value of that brand for the company. So that is very important. OK, so let's look at each of those in more detail. So prevention costs. They're the costs designed to prevent poor quality in products or services. And we're going to see this is where most of your focus should be, but in actual fact, a lot of the time it isn't. So we might have, uh, you know, project planning, um, even using the DMAC process, uh, doing supplier capability service surveys, quality improvement team meetings, uh, quality improvement projects, education, training. All of those are prevention costs. Appraisal costs, also called inspection costs, they're the costs that you have to put in to measure, evaluate, audit products or service. So in process, final inspection test, incoming source inspection of suppliers, uh, product process or service audits, uh, calibration of measuring and testing equipment. All of those are your inspection appraisal costs. And if you don't spend money on those areas, then you end up with the uh, failure costs. So in, internal failure costs are the costs occurring prior to delivery or shipment of the product or delivery of a service to the customer. So this will be scrap, rework, reinspection, retesting, you know, maybe um, downgrading certain products so it's sold off at a discount. Um, this concept in manufacturing of MRB where material is reviewed and either scrapped or reworked. Um, or you could have external failure costs. So they occur after the delivery of the product or during or after the delivery of a service to the customer. So this will be managing customer complaints, uh, managing customer returns, warranty claims, product recalls. All of these are failure costs. And then the intangible hidden costs, which you talked about, are the brand costs, uh, the goodwill of the company, uh, all of these are much more valuable today. I mean, branded products uh, do command a premium, so you're not just competing on cost. So, uh, in fact, 
people would argue that these costs are not just the hidden costs, that all of the quality costs are hidden costs. Unless you and your company have actually, and your organization, have actually um, decided to implement a financial cost of quality analysis, so you understand exactly what you're paying for your poor product quality or service. And if you do this, it'll make it much easier for your uh, Six Sigma projects to be justified, where you can show a baseline and you show where you've uh, maybe spent more on prevention costs, but you've actually reduced the uh, internal external failure costs and the intangible hidden costs, right? So this cost of quality measurement system, you know, it's, it's a key goal, a key success factor for Six Sigma. So this slide here shows if you want to determine, you know, whether your costs are prevention, appraisal or failure. So you would say, is this cost related to poor quality, preventing poor quality products or services? If it is, then it's a prevention cost. Is it related to inspecting or testing of the products or services so that they meet the customer requirements? If it is, yes, that's it's an appraisal cost. Uh, is it related to poor quality product or service? If yes, then it's a failure cost. If it's found before shipment of the product or before you provide the service, then it's an internal failure. If it's found after, then it's an external failure. If not, then it's probably not a quality cost. It's maybe some other cost. But understanding what your prevention, appraisal and failure costs are important. Let's look at the distribution of quality costs. Now, if you can see this pie chart here, the laser pointer, Typically in an organization, 10% of an organization's costs are prevention. So let's say you're spending 50,000 a year on quality costs when you add them all up. 10% of those will be in prevention, 25% in appraisal, and 65% internal and external failures. So the idea is that you can reduce your overall quality costs by spending more on your quality prevention activities. In this example, the idea would be that your prevention costs as a percentage of your overall costs would go up. Uh, similarly, on an appraisal, but the internal and external failure costs would come down and the overall cost would come down. So, for example, as I said, if you're spending 50,000, maybe you can reduce it to 25,000. So that's the target in distributing your quality costs. Now, there is a rule of 110-100, which says that if you spend a uh, euro in prevention, it'll save you 100 euros if you let that defect get out to the customer. So the graph here is showing the x-axis, the process step, so how late in the process, be it, um, you know, you prevent the defect occurring, right through to it fails out of the customer site and there's litigation loss. Uh, an example there would be, let's say you were building mobile phones, if you prevented a scratch on a phone, it might cost you a euro just to put the little plastic cover on. If you've got to replace the screen out of the customer site, then it could easily cost you 50 euros, 100 euros, as well as a loss in customer satisfaction image. Some research that has been done shows that the average organization, their cost of quality is approximately 25% of total sales. So if your sales are a million for the year, when you add up all your quality costs, you know, the prevention, appraisal, internal failure, external failure, and uh, image costs, it could be 25% uh, or higher. Uh, as we said earlier, the cost of prevention is a fraction of the cost of fixing those. And if you really focus your efforts on quality prevention, that can significantly reduce your total cost. So we've now looked at um, some of the goals. Uh, we also looked at the quality costs. And now we're going to uh, move on to the customer, focusing on the customer. So you could survey the customer. I've put a link up on the uh, website from free survey software from Paul Daddy that you could use. Uh, we won't be going into that into a lot of detail. And now we've got to define the critical to quality customer requirements. The critical to quality requirements are what's important to the quality of the process or service. And what's important is what the customer says is important. So if you're going to a restaurant, how long you're waiting, you know, for your table, how long you're waiting for your meal, is the food cold? You can identify CTQs or critical to quality requirements. 
uh, we're going to use this example here of this um, executive pen holder. So we're going to use this as a common theme through each of the uh, DMAIC steps. Um, we're going to be looking at this in a lot more detail, how it's manufactured. Uh, but again, a lot of the tools and techniques are common to other uh, manufacturing and service businesses. So in this case here, we've got the uh, pen, thermometer, hygrometer, measuring temperature and humidity. So obviously the, um, the fact there's no scratches on these, um, the, in particular, the diameter of this hole that the uh, pen holder and these two uh, gauges go into is critical. So we have an inspection step here. And you can see the laser pointer where uh, the base plate goes into a machine and there's two little gauges here and they can measure the inside diameter. Uh, if the diameter is too small, then these parts won't fit in. And if it's too large, and then the parts which are press fit, they're not glued in, will fall out. So that obviously will be a critical uh, to quality uh, requirement. Now you could argue that all of the specifications is a critical to quality, but really it doesn't really matter maybe the depth of this um, bevel here, maybe what the overall length and width are, is and the height. I mean, if it's plus or minus a millimeter, plus or minus two or three millimeters, it might actually be fine, but it's not critical to quality. So you would define those and then manage your process around that. So in summary, the, the critical to quality or CTQs, which we'll be talking about, are the specific measurable characteristics of the product or process that uh, are, are required for customer satisfaction. And that's the end of um, part B. And in part C now, we'll go on and we will uh, map the process.